Alola friends, Dapper Drabby here. Welcome to another PTCGO video. I know I missed one last week. Um, this is the one that was supposed to go up last week, but it, uh, I failed to get it recorded and put up. So I'm going to do a double. I'm going to record this, record one right afterwards, and uh, we're going to just post two today. Um, we're going to do one that I think is viable, which is this one, and we're gonna do a budget one right after that. Um, and I'm also gonna switch things up and start doing a budget one one week and then a a competitive one the next week. So let's go ahead and go over what we put in this. So we're playing with two new techs. We're playing with the Sil Valley tech in this Euro unit, you know, gyro unit that uh, allows your basic Pokemon to have no retreat costs. And then we're also playing with the new Zoroark GX trade ability. Uh, we have not been able to pull any of these in our Shining Legends packs um, on TCGO. Uh, we have pulled one uh, IRL, but uh, trade allows you once during your turn, you may discard a card from your hand and draw two cards. Uh, Riotous beating is 20 times the amount of Pokemon you have in play. And then Trickster GX, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon and use it as this attack. Now, Zorak is always known to be a trickster. Uh, so of course it has the trickster gx attack but that's uh why it's considered a best one of the best cards i ended up getting this one out of the uh, zoroark gx um box which came with some shining legends i had a pack opening of that but i ended up buying two so that i could get these uh these standard cards for uh deck building and then we were able to pull off uh two sil valley gx's out of the first few packs of uh of uh, Crimson Invasion that we had. Uh, Sil Valley, we have a Gyro Unit, which allows your basic to have no retreat. Turbo Drive does 120 damage and attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. In this case, we're playing with Psychic, so it'll be Psychic Energy. And then Rebel GX, 50 damage times the amount of uh, eat for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So, kind of maxes out there. Uh, we got two type nulls from the theme decks. We weren't able to pull any of those yet either. And then, of course, the two Zoras came with the Zora GX box. But now in for the attackers. So, we are playing a Necrozma Wobbuffet deck. Now, the idea behind this is to let your opponent get their GXs up, think they're safe, think they're safe, and then Necrozma's GX attack. You spread that damage, 100 everywhere, and then you clean up hit with Wobbuffet being able to do 100 damage plus, um, so it does 10 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So, if it's a GX, it's already going to have 100 damage on it. You put, uh, you put Wobbuffet out there, Psychic Assault will do 100 damage plus 10. So it does 110 damage. So... Overall, we're doing uh, 210 damage across the board, uh, which is what we like about this deck. Uh, we're going to boost that damage a little bit with a few tools, and uh, we're also going to bench hit with uh, Zorark and Sil Valley when necessary. So that's the point of this. So I guess our main attacker in this deck is probably Wobbuffet. We have four Wobbuffets, and we have three uh, Necrozmas. Now, Wobbuffet is good for that bide barricade as long as this pokemon is your active pokemon each pokemon in play and each player's hands and each player's discard pile has no abilities except for psychic pokemon so wabafet has an ability uh tapu lele's work um necrozma has an ability uh zorix will not work as long as wabafet's in the active and then Silvalis will not work unless you have that psychic spirit link attached so that's the way we're messing around with this. Uh, we're okay with that though. Uh, so Valley is kind of more of a bench hitter. The uh, turbo charge just helps occasionally to get those energies back onto Wobbuffet to be able to take that, uh, take those hits. And then Wobbuffet being a one prize attacker really uh, puts the pro the prize trade in our favor. Um, of course, we have uh, three Tapu Lele is pretty standard in most decks as long as Glaceon's not out. And then we have Necrozma's Lights End, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by colorless Pokemon. Prismatic Burst, we might use it occasionally as a secondary attack, but we're mainly using you for the Black Ray GX. Does 100 damage to each of your opponent's GX and Pokemon EX. So like I said, we want to get them, let them get those set up and then go ahead and clean up hit with Wobbuffet or 
Zorark or Sil Valley, really any of them, um, but primarily Wobbuffet. Now on to the trainers. Uh, we're starting with one field blower. Um, that's mostly just to bounce something that is uh, going to hinder us. Something like a stadium that's not helping us or stuff like that. We have three max elixirs because we play 10 psychic energies. And if we can psychic energy onto Necrozma, play a double colorless, then Necrozma's ready in one turn. And that's the point of that. And we play primarily a lot of basics. So there's a lot of basic targets for that max elixir. We play one rescue stretcher to get back stuff like um, if we end up having to throw away our evolutions early. Or if, uh, if we're struggling, we need to stuff back at the end of the game, we just pull back Rescue Stretcher. I'm pretty sure it's going to be primarily used for like Zoroark and Sil Valley, though. Uh, four Ultra Balls, pretty standard in every deck. Um, I guess I can do it this way. Uh, we got one Bridget. I don't think I had room. Oh, no, we did play two Bridges. So we're playing two Bridges, so in case one gets prized, we really want to have that set up first turn. Tapu Lele, Bridget, get so Type Gnaw, get... Zora out, get a Wobbuffet out, get an Necrozma out. You want one of each thing on your on your thing at all times. You want to get Necrozma because you got to get some energy on it. You want to get Zora so you can evolve into Zora, Sil Valley, so, or Type Null so you can evolve into Sil Valley. We are playing uh, three Guzmas so we can move stuff around. Um, this is going to be crucial when our, we're kind of ability locked by ourselves. When Wobbuffet is in the active and Silvalli does not have the proper tool on him, then he cannot may let uh, Wobbuffet retreat. So we have to have Guzma to be able to pull him out of the active. We have uh, 4N, which is pretty standard draw support. 3 Sycamore, pretty standard draw support. Some people play more. We're playing Choice Bands for those bigger numbers. So Choice Bands going to work. After we use Necrozma, we put it on Wobbuffet, and Wobbuffet will hit 40 more damage plus the 100 damage. So it'll hit for 140, which will knock out everything, which is primarily what we use Choice Band with. I believe we play three. No, we're playing a really random number of tools. We're playing one Choice Band, one Fighting Memory, two, three Float Stones, and two uh, Psychic Memories. So, I mean, that Choice Band is super important. I'm wondering if we should actually trade something out for another choice band. Um, the problem is is that there's a lot of Zoroarks on the other bench, which has a resistance to that Psychic type. So we want to be able to one-hit these Zoroarks with a um, with that Fighting Memory on Sil Valley, which is primarily the reason that Fighting Memory is there. See, the float stones are for the Wobbuffets. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and actually reduce one float stone and raise one choice band. So I'm a little cleaner on those hits. So that is the deck. We're going to go ahead and export it, save it. It is the, the tricky savior because uh, of Zoroark and uh, Sil Valley. But I guess, I don't know, Wobbuffet's pretty tricky as well. Um, I, I would say it's more of a Wobbuffet Necrozma deck with those two as supports. But I'm kind of showing off these supporters right now um yeah so it starred savior and the trickster let's take that to the versus ladder and see how it plays out against whatever i face i've been facing off against a lot of greninja lately which is a little annoying but hopefully we can get something different today Savior and Trickster. So let's go ahead, look for our opponent, and see what we've run into. We'll probably play just one match, and then we have we were able to trade our Celestila for a bunch of Crimson Invasion packs. So we'll probably open up a couple of those and see what kind of GXs we get to be able to play with if we ever find an opponent. I got about one copy of everything, so. We're just going to see if we can get multiple copies of some stuff and start making some decks. We're a little behind the curve than everybody else. This is running slowly. Let's see. We're facing off with the Blastoise. The White Thunder um, is calling the coin flip. I don't know if it's my connection speed or his. I thought mine was working fine earlier. So He is choosing to go first. White Thunder. I wonder if that's a... I mean, you can't base deck off of the name. 
Looks like it's fairy with a Blastoise coin. Who knows what that means? Let's go ahead and ability lock right away here by putting Wobbuffet up onto the active here. That really throw our uh, opponent off when they're trying to set up. We'll put Necrozma here so that we are uh, good to go. And what is our opponent starting with? And we're, we're, we're pretty good right now. We have... Um, I actually really like our hand, but I don't know what to throw away, because I'm definitely going to Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball, uh, Tapu Lele. I think I'm going to have to throw away the N and the Psychic Energy, to be perfectly honest, which kind of sucks. Hopefully whatever I, I get other than that will be something I can throw away. They're going to Guzma first turn. That's a surprise. That really does not help them at all. Ultra Ball, they're probably going to go for that Bridget. We are facing a pretty standard Gardevoir, it looks like. Taking their time. They want to make sure not to make any mistakes. Pulling out that top Lele. Which we do have the uh, World Championship decks to check out pretty soon. Uh, we got the Infinite Forest one. I think we got all four of them. We're actually going to do a bit of a series with them. We're going to continue the legendary deck battles, but with these... Uh, World Championship decks. Oh, we just top decked the Bridget. Amazing. I don't even have to do what I was wondering. So we're going to grab the Zora. And do we have the type? No. We have the type? No. Uh, oof, we only had one Zora, though. So what is the third one I should grab? Probably another Wobbuffet, I'm going to say. We're going to leave Tapu Lele in the deck for now. That's crazy. We have Ace of Valley prize and a Zorua prize. And we should be fine with the one Necrozma for now, I believe. We gotta let them think they are safe. We will just slowly build up this Necrozma and end our turn there. I'm hoping that with uh, Silvalli and with uh, Zorua Zoroark next turn. I can find my way into a double colorless energy. They got the fairy energy on DNC. So Necrozma is actually not going to come in play until later in the game, it looks like. I mean, we can knock out that Tapu Lele, but other than that, we're pretty out of luck here. We do get a fighting memory, which is not going to help us out very well in this matchup. They are going for the Octillery play over a Zorak play. So we will not need our Fighting Memory. Go ahead and use that to get another prize. Um, I don't need this much. Do we have something else that can attack? We do not. I think I'm going to trap him. I'm going to go ahead and trap him. We're going to use Silv Valley to go ahead and put that Wobbuffet up there and trap our opponent with a small hand size. And we're going to we're just going to play a little stall tactic here for a little while, which is kind of this deck's forte. You want that bide uh, barricade up there so that they can't really do very much. They are just going to be evolving here. Which is fine. Um, we're just going to slowly build up on the bench here. Psychic Assault. Um, I trust our ability to spread that damage on the guard of ours once it is all said and done. Um, all I need is a DCE, but if I find... Uh, ooh, they're going to Guzma. They want to be able to use their power. They see Silvalli as the threat. So they go ahead and get their artillery play there. Which we will, uh, once they knock out Silvalli, we're going to go ahead and knock them down a bit here. So 
So they must have the Gardevoir. If they're willing to throw Curlia out under the bus like that. They do not. So they're going to Sparkling Wish. Get their Gardevoir up now. I kind of want to see one more before I go ahead and take it out. Ooh, this makes it fun. The question is whether or not to... I definitely think I should throw the DCE on Necrozma. Because they're going to try to go after Silvalli here. And I wonder what I should do with that Psychic Energy. Because I could Ultra Ball. Since I have access to it, I'm going to go ahead and trade here. It's hard to throw out that Psychic Energy, but it seems to be necessary right now. We can Tapu Lele for a Guzma. But that doesn't solve it because they can just attach a fairy energy to whatever we throw there and they'll be able to retreat it. Let's just play it how we, we planned on playing it. So we'll go ahead, Tapu Lele for a Guzma here. See what else is in the deck here. We do. We still have not hit max elixirs. We have one choice band and all that energy left. Our max elixirs are not going to hit now, though. We're going to go ahead and Guzma up the Octillery. And throw up our uh, Necrozma. And make it where they have to play an Acerola. This might be a little more premature. This deck would probably work better with um, if I would have put a Wobbuffet up there. Because it would have ability locked them. But they would have had the Manly attached to Octillery instead of Secret Spring. They're going to go ahead and Field Blower, get rid of their Stadium. I guess they're just trying to lower their hand size. Yeah, the best play there would have probably been to lock them up, put the Wobbuffet up there so that they would have had a Octillery in the active with a, uh, a blocked up... Uh, they would have had to play the Fairy Energy manually onto Octillery, which means they would have had to Secret Spring in order to play everything else. Right now they can still manually attach a Double Colorless Energy, I believe. But would, they would have had to manually... I think they still had the cards to get out of it, so it wouldn't have locked them up too much. But here we go. They're going to go Infinite Force, go after that Necrozma, taking two prizes. And I believe we can Revenge KO with this Wobbuffet. We just need one card, which we do not have. But I believe that we do have a way to find it. Um, we do not have Skyla, though, do we? So I'm going to go ahead and end here. Oh, we got it. We got it. We get the card I was thinking of, which is Choice Band. We're going to go ahead and put the DCE... Um, question is on Silvalli or on Zorark? I think it's best on Silvalli. This could be another mistake on my part. And then we're going to do 110 damage plus 30. So, Wobbuffet to take out the Gardevoir with 140 damage, catching us up in prizes here. With the Guzma, with the Choice Ban, so we can take out that Tapu Lele next turn. I believe... Oh, they're going to go with the... Nice. Now the question is, does that take out... That's going to take out the Silvalli? 
which is fine for us. We will have to worry about this Gallade. We have a lot of weakness against it. What is its weakness? Its weakness is Psychic, so... Um, Necrozma can take it out with the right amount of energy. But uh, Wobbuffet's kind of out of luck, because it can do 20 damage at first. So there does go a double colorless energy, though. But next turn, we're going to go ahead and Guzma ourselves to take out that Tapu Lele. So we'll go ahead and put up the Wobbuffet. And then take out the Tapu Lele. And we'll get the next one ready, I guess. Just can't really take out anything. Um, who should we grab here? I guess we're going to throw it onto Zorak. Because he's going to have to kind of finish the game here. For the last two prizes. Um, Lele does not do enough damage. Zorak gets one-shotted. So that's the question here. Lele can do 20, 40, 60, 80. Two-shotting on that. Let's attach the Psychic Energy first, then. Just go ahead and attach it to Tapu Lele. With we'll the choice band onto Lele as well. I guess we need the bench spot here. So I'll throw Tapu Lele down. I mean, we we're going to throw it away anyways. So that they know I have the, the out next turn. We're going to grab the Guzma here. So worst case scenario, they are going to end us here. Wobbuffet for another knockout onto the Tapu Lele, taking two more prize cards. And now it gets difficult. Now we could have Ultra Balled there, threw away the Bridget and the Sycamore, but this seemed difficult at best. Um, would have put us in a bind here at the end of things. We do get end, like I figured we would. But they will probably take out the Wobbuffet here. Yep, with Sensitive Blade. So we're going to move this Tapu Lele up here now. And see what we can do to try to change some things here. We get another Tapu Lele. I'm going to go ahead and trade this Zoroark for two more cards. Which is a max elixir. Will we even hit that? We hit that. That's a surprise. On the Wobbuffet. I can Tapu Lele here. For that supporter once more. And what we want to do is take out his draw engine. Um, but everything I'm playing does not have the yikes. I want to take out Octillery, but I don't have the way to wish to move things around right now. So that was a bad grab. I don't have anything with Free Retreat either. So I literally have to Energy Drive and try to knock down this, uh... Gallade here. Well, I'm not even halfway through my deck. This is a super stall deck. Abysmal Hand. He's making it where in case he does get end up, he has a way out. Ending down to two again, so we wasted both Lele's there. But my hope is that I can throw a double colorless on Zorark and he can hit some numbers. And 
and then he's got an abysmal hand so he can find the exact cards he needs or not so 130 damage on to Tapu Lele here let's go ahead and trade the Ultra Ball and see what we can get we get an N and a DCE okay that's something that is something. So, what we can do here is throw that onto Zorark. We can retreat into Zorark, put that float stone on him, field blower, the stadium, and riotous beating to take out this. Uh, Gallade, leading us down to Azurua. Now they don't have any fighters left to take on Zorark GX. They have to pull Tapu Lele off the bench. Um, so hopefully their abysmal hand can do that for them. Uh, choice band, an N, down to one card. Which is a Sil Valley. Abysmal Hand on my opponent's side. And Diamond Storm. So, we have to hit 90. Which we will we'll try to right here. We're going to trade this Sil Valley. See if we can get a basic Pokemon. Get a Max Elixir. Go ahead and put that energy on to... Tapu Lele, and show off our power here with Sycamore finding a Necrozma, Wobbuffet, doesn't matter, we found what we were looking for, and won the game with that Riotous beating, so I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, Gardevoir is still a pretty up there deck, so it's still kind of top dog, so... Proving the ability to Wobbuffet our way to victory is kind of cool. So you saw I was able to, even though I did it prematurely, made the end of the game a little more difficult. That ability, we've, we've really utilized everybody. And look who the look who the MVP of the deck was. It is that Wobbuffet Bide Barricade Psychic Assault was able to come in, take out those Gardevoirs, Look, we, they did more damage to us. Um, it was a close game, but we were able to come out on top. We had the attack right there to take it out. Um, this looks like a pretty standard guard of our list going back to the World Championships. So, that's pretty good. So, what I'm going to do now is, we're about at a half hour, but um, what I want to do is open up some packs... So, we will go ahead and go over here. We'll get this posted. We're going to open up. We have 26 packs, so I think we'll open up half now and half at the beginning of the next video. So, let's just go ahead and go into it. We're going to open up 13 packs right now and then open up 13 packs at the beginning of the next video. So, we're just going to open them all at once. But, yes, look at that. We got another Ultra Beast with the Eat Sloppily Guzzlord. We get a full art of that. That's nice. That's nice. So this looks like it's going to be a good opening. Slandit, Gladian, Swablu, and a Type Gnaw. Ooh, back to back. Back to back. Very nice. Now we can play a full Sil Valley deck and an Escavalier. Um, so that's pretty exciting. We have about nine packs left here. And that is a Stormy. Down to 21. Gonna kind of rapid fire here. Aaron, reverse rare is a Kamo, -O, and our rare is a Miss Magius. Down to 20. So I would say that was worth it. We traded a Celesteela for most of these packs, so that's kind of nice that we were able to get uh, a GX Ultra Beast right off the bat. So about. 
This is six from the end. Gastrodon with a Regirock. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't give me two pulls and then give me nothing for like 12 packs. That's just not fair. Reverse Rare is a Star Raptor. Not going to be used. And an Alolan Raichu. That makes four non-hollow Alolan Raichus and four hollow of Alolan Raichus for me now. Another Reverse Rare, which is that Wiggly Tough. And a Komo- oh. Ah, uh, three more packs here, and then we'll finish up the video. An Executor, a Cag Turd. Uh, two more packs. Come on, finish strong, finish strong, and it is a Primeape. Wow, there's a lot of different rares in this. So we're left with 13 packs left. This is the last pack for now. We will end it off here. Thank you guys so much for coming out. This has been Dapper Drabby, and go goat to the next uh, video. But for now, I'll bid you guys a Lola. Bye-bye now.